Previously on The Mandalorian, Season 3, Episode 7. Moff Gideon has a secret base under Mandalore and a, and a superior attack fleet with interceptors and bombers. And so the Mandalorians need to fight on the ground. Because otherwise, if they go to the space, if they go to the space, Moff Gideon is going to wipe them out of the sky. What did you think about this episode? Uh, the finale of Season 3, I give it a 5 out of 10. Uh, I'm knocking it down because I have high standards for a finale. I was expecting more. Uh, the battle felt a little rushed. It didn't feel, feel as epic as I wanted it to be. It felt a little confined and small. Uh, I liked it, but finale level? Not sure. Uh, I thought the death of Moff Gideon is pretty anticlimactic. I mean, it's been three seasons of this. Yeah, I don't know. And then where was the Elia Kane storyline? The one back on Coruscant. We didn't see anything, so I don't know what the setup is for season four. I thought that was left by the wayside. Uh, although, can't wait to see what happens in season four. We've got lots of setup. We've got Din doing mercenary work for the New Republic. we got Bo on Mandalore. Who knows what the future is wide open and the Elia Kane storyline. So, episode 5 out of 10, but lots of setup for season 4, so I'm happy. What did you think of the episode? I give it a 7 out of 10, which is, I guess, up from my usual rankings. So, so there were some pros and cons to this episode. So, the pros. The Mandalorians finally did cool Mandalorian things. Like, like bo she was an excellent field commander. She did, she, like, was giving commands through her helmets and sending people in all sorts of different directions. And, and she, like, was aware of the situation, except for maybe during the, the last few minutes when the, when the ship came crashing down. I don't know how she knew what was going on there. Um, but the tactics felony felt Mandalorian. Like, like when they left the capital ship and jumped into the, the gauntlets, the, the drop ships, they, like, like we're Mandalorians, like we just jump out into space and we have rocket packs. Like I was like, ooh, ooh, that's they're they're taking advantage of their skill sets. I loved it. Um, but I'll, on the other hand, I don't understand why Moff Gideon put on armor at all. He's like a behind the scenes type person. He like pulls the strings there. Like, why does he feel the need to like go in there and fist fight? Like, super weird. I didn't understand why he did that. Um, he should be behind the scenes pulling strings and then just. When the fight happens, he like disappears in the shadows and lets other people fight. Um, but but okay, okay, we got a big old triumph about with him burning up from the, from the crash ship. Um, maybe I I think he's still alive. We we never found a body. He might be still alive. Oh, that or Elia Kane. Maybe she comes back, but then she's actually Moff Gideon in disguise. I don't know some some type of shit like that. Um, but that being said, the end of the episode. The future of Mandalore is wide open. There's there's no dark saber, and so but so people are just following Bo-Katan Kryze because they like her, and she did a really good job. She did a really good job leading them. I think they will follow her. And plus, the forges are open, so like they can start building new stuff again. Like the scene is wide open, so I'm super excited for for season four. Let's okay. get into this episode. Let's do it. This episode, The Mandalorian, season three, episode eight, the finale of the season. Let's talk about it. I really liked how they did this because because she, she's stuck on the planet. She needs to communicate up to I think it was Axe Axe Wolves was going up, and so she needs to communicate the situation and orders to him so that way they get the rest of the troops down on the ground. Let's watch this. Moff Gideon is alive. He's gathered his forces. They're sending up fighters to destroy the fleet. Use the capital ship as a decoy. Evacuate everyone. We have to beat them on the ground. Understood. I'm entering upper atmosphere, but I have my orders. So cool. So cool. I really like this touch here where like he's entering the upper atmosphere. And so the communication is going to get cut off between the spaceships and the ground force. And like they're even like, like it's built into their communications breakdown. Like, like all that static. Like, perfect. I also liked that she kept the statements in simple sentences. And the orders were simple sentences. So sit rep, sit rep, sit rep. There's orders. And then off you go. So the critical information in this high stress battle environment with limited communications, it was communicated. It's good. She's a very good field commander. Mm -hmm. Although she should probably delegate the communication to somebody else, but so she can focus on other That's things. True. But in the moment, she had to do it this way. Done. She got it done. Clear mm -hmm. communication. Everyone given orders. 
Troops are on the way. Perfect. Mm -hmm. TIE craft deployment. So inside the base, when Moff Gideon's like, send the TIE fighters or send the interceptors, they launch. They launch in this way that is super cool. Super cool launch. So the question I had about this was they're in a static base underground. This seems like a high level of difficulty of deployment where <laughs> one screw up by one of the TIE fighters incapacitates this whole area. That's right. Um, so they're like, they're so, like, like, go ahead, go ahead. So they have the skills to do this, but it's also why make it difficult if you don't have to? Why can't it be a regular deployment? Why is this like bat deployment? <laughs> and then off you go. So, hmm. Yeah, super cool that they look like bats hanging and it's super intimidating. But like this is a free for all free free fall drop. And they where they have to like reorient and activate the engines, the repulsors, like, like just right just right away. Imagine if someone like slipped on the control stick or just wasn't fast enough. They crashed and hit the floor, and then all the other ships after them can't launch. Can't launch. <laughs> right. And he, so Why these two launch them? simultaneously here. Um they should probably launch more staggered just to make sure that there isn't any because there could be kind of repulsor coupling or aerodynamic coupling that they I'm not saying right. you can't do it. it takes a high level of skill but why take the risk super cool though super cool although the one thing i thought about this so yeah so there's like these railways up here where the pilots like run first of all you got your pilots running on a narrow catwalk. <laughs> why? Why? Like, the pilot slips, and then they're like, "Well, our bird is down. We can't launch." Also, the pilots climb in here, and then they're sitting, but they're sitting. They sit with their faces pointing out the window, mm -hmm. like they face out the window, which means in here when they're hanging, they're like harnessed face down, like. Do they have something on their chest supporting them when they're face down? Or are they just like climbing in and like aggressively pushing against the window so that they can get buckled in? Like, right? Because the seat rest is behind, is above them. Maybe it's one of those cool Star Wars swivel chairs where it's actually sitting upright and they get in, strap in, and then and then they're ready to rock. And then that gives them some G maneuvering so when they you know, when they go into high G maneuvers, but they don't need high G maneuvers. They have repulsors. Anything inside the craft isn't felt inside. So it's just an advanced swivel chair for no reason. I would be super happy if there was the advanced swivel chair came out here, came out here on the catwalk. So you just sit down on the chair and it like drops you in. That would be sick. It's like those seats that, uh, you know, infirm people have that they go up the stairs. Yeah. Except for drop you in yeah mm -hmm. i like it it's just that's an unnecessary amount of complication it could just be right. have them level they walk in they sit down level in the tie fighter and deploy horizontally it's so much simpler why make it so complicated yep, yep. make it simple cool though super cool also now that i'm seeing this there's maintainers and cargo underneath where they're hanging so if there was a screw up, a mechanical failure, a pilot error, they're taking out supplies as well. That could be critical. Oh heck, maybe ch imagine if they these boxes were stacked a little bit too high here. <laughs> like higher than normal, higher than regulation, but one trooper was mm -hmm. just like, "You know what? I'm putting this box here, box here, I don't care." Mm -hmm. And then this okay. this tie, the tie interceptor is like crash into it. Just, mm -hmm. just on their it drop. Could be temporarily hit, placed. Hit but in an emergency, it's accidentally somewhere it shouldn't have been. Whoops. This is the door, mm -hmm. right? And we saw pre previously that people's heads are about this high, about mid mid door height. So mm -hmm. these this, these tie fighters are skimming people's heads like <laughs> that. They could crush someone just just, just mm -hmm. enough to crack their neck. Super dangerous. Nice. What are they doing? But have you seen how crowded aircraft carriers get? Like mm -hmm. their decks are just jammed full of shit ships. I mean, absolutely. They do a high degree of difficulty of deployment and bringing planes back and refueling and all of it, but it's not by choice. 
if they had a choice, they would have a floating, you know, 50 square kilometers of space that they could easily just do whatever. But they can't because the ship is space constrained. Here, they're not space constrained. Why make it difficult? I think I found the reason they are space constrained. They're constrained to inside the base. Let's walk it backwards and you'll see it. So here mm -hmm. they are, they're, they're coming in and then you like, you lie on, mm -hmm. you got your rear view mirror, you're parking backwards, mm -hmm. and then zoop, like a little parking spot. Actually, this makes a lot of sense when you view it like this. They're optimizing for having to fit all the ships inside the cave. Mm. And it's hidden. Mm -hmm. And maybe then you burrowing. Still walkway. Yeah, and burrowing into the, the mountain is time consuming, so they have limited space in the cave. Okay. And I think Gideon okay. has a thing for bats. So, okay. Mm -hmm. So, so Grogu, Grogu and, and Din Djarin are walking around the base and Moff Gideon's like, where are they? Then he sees exactly where they are with this beautiful, beautiful hologram that tells you exactly where they are. Let's watch. I mean, I mean, right there. <laughs> this is Din, this is Grogu. You can even see like they're color coded and the Grogu dot's a little bit smaller than the Din Grot. Yeah. So the, 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 the dots are precise, they're smooth, they're color-coded, size-coded, precisely exactly where they are in the base. I mean, how did they create this technology? This is amazing. This is them tracking an enemy who doesn't want to be tracked, and they're doing it. It's crazy. That's right. It's so accurate that you can tell that Din didn't even walk up to the, to the corner of the hallway here. He like walked right in the middle. You could see exactly his pathing. Yeah. From that, you can tell, like, you can tell how nervous they are. They're not, like, creeping up around corners. They're just like, I'm walking through the middle. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah, they're just sauntering. No problem. Hmm. I mean, Din is a badass. We saw him he, kill lots of people. I mean, destroy. Oh, yeah, so for this one, uh, Woes is, you know, he goes up to the, the ship uh, that's hovering i guess or is it i guess it's hovering it's not an orbit it's actually hovering above a place on the surface and he goes and starts giving commands to people on the bridge this is a huge ship like what what how is everybody on the same page with what the orders are let's watch take care of the cruiser everyone go move go move move load everyone onto the drop ships go like the guy in the back's like wait 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 what what are we doing wait everyone's running uh hello I guess I'm running with them. What are we doing? Hello, what are we doing? I'm running. There's somebody. In, there's somebody in the mess hall. Is like, I'm. I'm. Can I? Can I take this food with me? Like, 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 like put my helmet on my 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 hip here. Like, I mean, somebody. somebody in the bathroom, is, like, I just just yeah. pinch it off. I guess. Just, just. We gotta go. Shit's about to hit the fan. And there's a guy who's like in a Jeffrey's tube, maintaining something somewhere. He's like wrench in hand, and he's like, oh, uh, we're leaving. Okay. That's, I, Did I even I guess hear I don't that? need to right. fix the ship anymore. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's somebody in their bunk that's like snooze. <laughs> like, whatever. <laughs> we got left on the ship. <laughs> so I wonder if there's anybody left on the ship just because it's uh, chaotic communications. Mm -hmm. And he's, sh he's shouting with his helmet off. He's not even giving a command into the radio. That's true. It's just whoever I encounter will get the plan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But that being said, like, if they, if so behind the scenes, maybe they had someone that was like, like, oh, I'll take it up by myself. I'll put my helmet on the radio out. Once they get the command, they're all like, snap to it. Super mm -hmm. Mandalorian discipline. They're like, the battle's going, orders coming in for commander. Let's go fuck people up. I love it. Love it. Somehow they communicate. And get it done. Get it done. Oh, yeah. So the next part is right after he gives those commands. They jump off the ship with their jetpacks and land in the troop transports. Was that the best way to deploy troops to troop transports? Let's watch. Jetpack. On the troop transports. Oh, oh. So, so for me, I would if I was wanted to deploy to troop transports, I would put the troop transports on the capital ship, and then I would walk up the ramp and sit in my seat. Now I have to jetpack out into space, then slip slide up the ramp, and you know, like hood slide onto the uh, freaking seat, and then we're good to go. That's, I hope nobody gets injured. 
he, little slip slide. He did like a like a second base slide. It's like yeah. one of those things where you go feet first, <laughs> then you you end up mm -hmm. upright anyway. Super cool. Mm -hmm. I thought this was a great way for them to launch. This like takes advantage of their Mandalorianness, where they have like jetpacks. I think if I was landing like regular old stormtroopers that don't have jetpacks, then yeah, yeah, get the troop transport, settle it down, let them walk up. But for Mandalorians with jetpacks, they're like combat ready. Like that is the fastest way to get them off the off the capital ship and into the gauntlets and onto the drop ships. I liked this scene a lot. This was super cool. But, but the, what about like if the enemy has a say and the enemy is in the area, maybe they're not super effective, but they could harass the, the, the Mandalorians as they're moving from one ship to the other. So it feels like that could be a benefit to the enemy. Whereas if it's on this capital ship, then the enemy has, you know, can't really harass the people during troop transport. Ooh loading i see what you're saying so if if the tie interceptors were like zooming around out here then the safest place for them to get on the transport is inside the ship get 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 the gauntlets in the ship get the people in the gauntlets get the gauntlets out um and i if there were tie fighters or interceptors around the area imagine like they just timed their approach with these with the people and just just windshield just splatter everyone yeah super dangerous so this like this maneuver where they jump out of the capital ship and onto the gauntlets onto the drop ships it really works if you if you're in a rush but you also know that your immediate vicinity is safe i guess so right super cool though and they execute cool. it flawlessly flawlessly i like this high level of difficulty so cool slip slide up the ramp hey, we'll take in a seat. down Whew. crazy tight ship so this is the red shield battle so in star wars episode one when obi-wan and uh qui-gon are fighting Qui darth maul they have the red shield things they also have this shield device in the base which we saw last episode and here Din comes through and actually fights all of the guards in the the red shield room, I guess you'd call it, and is able to isolate them in pairs using the shield. It's pretty cool. Let's watch. Deactivate the first shield. I love how these guys are like, the first two guards are like, what? <laughs> what? The first shield. <laughs> 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 like, immediate bitch slap. <laughs> Just immediate. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Knife. Ah! Over oh. the shield. So I was blown away. What are these massive holes doing in this room? So none of these guards are they're stuck in between the red shields. There's like there's a massive hole to the left and right. So they are just like stuck there for their shift. Mm -hmm. oh my God, mm -hmm. terrifying. As far as we know, these are bottomless pits because the Empire likes bottomless pits. That's true. So it's like, what do you do if you get tired? Like, fall. <laughs> fall, <laughs> fall. <laughs> I guess. Don't I guess the down. good thing though is like, if you gotta take a potty break, you got a giant hole. Just blast it down there. Yeah, you just. <laughs> hey, let's yeah. have a lightsaber fight through this red shield. In fact, you could do like bank shots. You like, can call your shot and like mm. blast it off the edge into the pit. Yeah. An extra man points if you could arc it into somebody else's. <laughs> what is that, three meters away? <laughs> Got the pressure. Kobe! <laughs> <laughs> Man, these guards, since they have nothing to do all day, they must get up to some antics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? they must. So boring. Until you know it's not boring. Fun? What? Because they're dying. Oh. Okay. Okay. My thought was super <laughs> wholesome. You get a bouncy ball in between the red shields, just like bing, 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 bing. And they could play a game all day, but like how many bounces can you get? Until it falls like, in oh, the Moth hole. Is here. And it's gone Gideon. Oh yeah, yeah. But imagine at the bottom of the bowl, the bottom of this these holes here is just a bunch of bouncy balls and like shit, <laughs> like literal yeah. shit bouncy <laughs> balls. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Over the shield. Yeah, down the hole. Doesn't work. Nobody <laughs> like psychological warfare. It's like after every kill he gets, he just take the body and just drags it into the pit. That'd be sick. I mean, that would be like <laughs> terrifying. Like, like the guy's already dead, mm -hmm. but.
but this this Mandalorian like still wants to crush the body. Woo. Hmm. R5, next shield. Five, next Down the hole. On forever. Bum rush. Oof. To the shin. Oof. R5, next shield. R5. Next shield. R5. I'm happy we get to see these little guys in action. Like, I always Great. wondered what they did. Th this is the perfect use of them. Little security droids. Just yeah. drive around and check out. Is everything okay? Very cool. Oh, yes. He could have cleaned up all the bodies, just dumped them away. Oof. That's right. Have you ever played Assassin's Creed? Uh, no. Assassin's Creed is one of these like stealthy games where like you don't want people to find hidden like bodies that you've knocked out. So you like take their bodies and you throw them off the cliff like very meticulously. Super fun. Super, but also kind of messed up if you think about it. Doesn't but matter here though, because they're tracked. That's right. And R5, R5 did a good, good job, buddy. R5 did a good job. That's right. R5, good job, buddy. R5. Also, R5. Din's domination. He just never catches a bullet or a blaster or anything. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't mm -hmm. take a hit. Just absolute domination. That's our guy. That's, That's that bounty hunter lifestyle. Constant mm -hmm. combat, just hardened. Hardened by the, the field mm. battle. You know what's not hardened? These panels that explode. This is the Moff Gideon's clones. And Din walks up to him and he's like, doot, doot, doot. the whole thing blows up. So, okay, let's watch. Let's go. I mean, why was that an option in the panel? What, what, <laughs> what, what did he press? <laughs> That was like, oh, I'll hit this one and that one, and that's going to explode them? Aren't they like environmental <laughs> controls for the fluid that's holding the clones? Where is the explode mode? What is that? That's right. Why don't you just put a valve on the bottom that drains the liquid? Why blast it all over the floor where people have to walk? <laughs> why blast it? Why the blast the liquid and the glass all over the floor where these, yeah. where these clones that have no shoes on are about to walk? You're like, welcome to life. Here's some glass on your feet. <laughs> What are they doing? Oh, yeah. And then the, the water and the glass and whatever else is going to drain into the drains. Now you've got floating glass getting ground glass. up in the grass and like, clone oh. fluid. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, oh, it's like placental fluid too. Oh, 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 oh. And then when they step out, there's little bits of blood and stuff. And the, and the clones are like, why did you create me? <laughs> why did you do this? Yeah. And why is it an option at all to blast out? But why is there a button to blast it out? Just a button for drain. Just doop, turn on the drain. Right. And if, if you could put it in a state where it might explode, wouldn't safeties kick in and be like, don't, let's not do that. Don't do that. Imagine if you had a bathtub full of water and you're like, instead of draining it from the bottom, I'll just break out the wall and <laughs> flood it everywhere. That's right. Hey, that's I'm how I drain now. my bath. <laughs> that's right. I only live in an apartment for one bath and then it's on to the next place. Yeah. On to the next place, yeah. The other thing about this is like these are Moff Gideon's clones, but are these the only clones he has? Like if I was evil genius, I would have like a second batch in a different location. Like why not, right? Yeah, you know they say in investing, diversify, diversify, diversify. So if he really cares about these clones, he should have multiple clone stations you know, on this base and then multiple bases around the galaxy to ensure that if one ever you know, maybe it doesn't do the explode mode, but it, it fails for whatever reason. He has backups. That's right. Din was so confident that this was it. That's right. Also weird. Also weird that this is next to, like, the communications room. This is next to Moff Gideon's office. Like, why would I put a laboratory right next to my office? That's going to be super noisy. It's going to be super loud. And also super weird just seeing a bunch of me's in the next room. Like, mm -hmm. put it somewhere else. Put it... The scientists also don't want to be next to admin. Like, give us some space. Like, give us a big old room that's nice marble and that's shit good, somewhere else. That's a good point because the scientists are going to need offices and, and maintenance rooms and different things to do their work. It would be uncomfortable to be right next to the comms and the Right next to management. Like, uh, yeah. Just, uh, constantly. Uh, uh. Uh. 
I guess I guess if I had management constantly breathing down my neck, I would put emergency destroy buttons on things. That's exactly what's <laughs> happened. We figured it out. We figured it out. It makes sense now. <laughs> Moff Gideon was micromanaging the scientists and technicians, and they put a sabotage switch into the control panel, which Din immediately recognized it for what it is and executed within five seconds. Easy. Done. It's super clear, but since Moff Gideon rules from on high, he never reads the panel. He's, he never saw the like the execute explosion button. It's like right there. <laughs> Safety first, no cap. Okay, so so Bo Katan and her elite squad that came down to to protect the, to ensure a safe perimeter first to to create a safe perimeter. They get they have to run away from Moff Gideon's base, and they like they are just leaving combat where some of them died. At least at least Paz Vizsla died. And so then they find this cave, and immediately, no helmet. We'll be safe down here a while. I mean, how does he know that? He, did they clear the area? They did not. He's the first person in, and he told them all to take their helmets off before they get in. They're, they're still in combat. They have not exited combat. They don't know they've exited combat until they clear the area. Super dangerous, dude. What are you doing? He's like, I've so been even here if it's, before. It's fine. Even if, it, even if it's unlikely that troops from the Imperial base were deployed here, and they know that it's unlikely, you still got to clear the area because in battle, people go off in different directions. It could There could be something here, something you didn't realize was there, maybe a tunnel. Who knows? Got to clear the area. Got to clear the area before the helmets come off. What if they were, what if Moff Gideon is like, hey, send one bomber to follow them from a distance, and then they drop bombs from on top of this. Now they're like, oh, I, someone tipped their head because they didn't have a helmet on. Just keep your helmet on. Just keep your helmet on. Actually, that's a good point. The helmet should never come off even feeling safe because it's combat conditions. So you never know when a sneak attack or a sniper or who knows what is going to occur. So keep the helmet on. Oh, but the helmet's not going to stop you from a bomb, but... But it might protect you from the shrapnel, the debris or stuff. Keep the helmet on. Right. Just keep and falling on. rocks. Or pressure waves where you get thrown against the wall that'll help keep you from getting concussed. Absolutely. There's so many yeah. reasons to keep your helmet on. Keep your helmet on. Keep your Especially helmet on. Especially because it's Beskar. <laughs> oh, this place. This is where they get into. So I, I guess I, I get it because they want to like see this with their own eyes. They want to smell it with their own noses. But... But why? I mean, just keep your helmet on. However, this place is super cool. Super cool. Because, like, the surface of the planet has been glassed. It's been, like, destroyed by bombs. And so then in these underground places, you got to get a little bit of, of air mixing and a little bit of sunlight. Not too much, but also some shade so the water doesn't just evaporate. Super cool idea to have to have these, these underground little mini forests. So I was actually confused about the timing. The Mandalorian said, like, these plants they'd never seen in their life. It was crazy. They had been dormant. But then right. uh, they kind of implied that they had been destroyed in the Imperial bombing, which actually was not that long ago, 10, 20 years maybe. So are these plant? what timeline are these plants from? I didn't understand. Right. So so I had to fill in backstory to make it work, but I, I think it's okay. So my understanding of these plants were that these are like the ancient Mandalorian plants, um, that so so when these people were alive, these Mandalorians, they had different types of plants on the planet. Things that were like you know like like uh, cash crops, like corn and stuff like that. Things that could feed a lots of people. Um, I figured that the bombing, like burned the surface, heated up the surface, exposing seeds that had been dormant, in a similar fashion to how like the the sequoias, how their their pine cones don't open up until there's a fire. So like a fire signifies to the pine cone, like things, the shrubbery is burned away. You can actually, you can actually become a seed now. I don't know how that works. You can actually drop your seeds now. And then, and then the baby sequoias will have enough space for, for sunlight to grow. So I figured that was something like here where these plants are natural to, to Mandalore, but, but they've been cultivated. They've been, they've been, they were like treated like weeds, I guess. And so they were, they were pushed away for the Mandalorian, the people's plants, but upon the destruction of the surface, then these things were cracked open and were able to grow again. So that's similar to the kaiju that we saw and similar to the mythosaur that we saw in the waters of Mandalore, that somehow they got reawakened after dormancy. Interesting. 
maybe. Okay. Super like nice it. though. Like mm. I would totally set up a hammock like right, right there and just chill. That'd be very nice. Like constantly yeah. in direct sunlight. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, forget the battle. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Mandalorian. <laughs> I'll wait for them to be done. Uh, not slipshot. Oh, I missed it. Okay, so in the fight, in the fight, the final fight, we're at a part where Din is 1v1 against Moff Gideon. And he does this, like, like charge into the room and, and, and rocket punch. Super cool. And I, I mean, I don't know if you've ever worked fast food, but but back in the day, they told us to buy these non-slip shoes because there's like wet on the floor, and you don't want people slipping and falling. If Moff Gideon had non-slip shoes, he might have been able to push back uh, Din instead of having to do combat redirect. And that being said, he still did it. Like it still looked really good the way he did it. Um, let's watch. Right there. If this was like non-slip more grippy maybe he would have stood his ground better but overall pretty good on the bigger on the bigger scale <laughs> On the bigger scale, Din and Gr this this whole battle, this whole battle in the end comes down to roughly three perspectives. So there's Din and Grogu, they're fighting as a team. Bo is off on her own, but then she later joins them. And then Wolves, Wolves, Axe Wolves has his part of the battle that he's doing on his own thing. And so so we broke it apart, the different perspectives of the battles, so that you could see how, how isolated they are in, in reality, um, as opposed to how they are cut together. Um, so first, first let's watch Din and Grogu's perspective. What did they see during the fight? Double guns. Double guns. Swinging. Huh? Trapped. Always try the button. My clothes, but improved by adding the one thing I never had. The force. Why is your helmet off? This all could have been ended if if um, Din here had hit them in the head. Mm -hmm. Okay. Slightly. Ooh, coming off. There you go. There's the jetpack charge. Ooh. Oof. Oof. <laughs> These guys. These guys. They always show up like a few minutes later, like, mm -hmm. and they're not running onto the fight. They're like. Chilling in this smoky place, waiting for Gideon to be like, "Need help? Come on out!" <laughs> yeah, exactly. Even against Paz Vizsla, like all the stormtroopers, they got killed, and then they're like, "All right, all right, we'll we'll come out now." But they weren't like and running onto the scene; they weren't far away. Like they were already there. They're just waiting. They're chilling behind cargo boxes in smoke, just to make this grand entrance. Like, well, let's, let's help out with the battle. The you know, the grand entrance isn't so important. Yo, honestly, I think they're this. What is this smoke coming from? I think they were just vaping, just in the back there, just blowing, like blowing clouds, and then and then people are dead, and they're like, "Oh, all right, now that I'm juiced up, let's mm -hmm. go." Calm. Their nerves are calm now. That's why they're so, you know, saunter, sauntery. Is that a word? Sure. Sa Sauntitious. Sauntitious. There we go. Okay, now they're ready to join the fight. Let's watch them fight. <laughs> No, no, no. Grogu. Like how all three of no. them go after Grogu. That's right. <laughs> this guy, he's he's not incapacitated. He's just down right now. And all three of them like, fuck that kid up. <laughs> well, maybe they do somehow recognize that he's a force user and the biggest threat. So they need to take him out immediately. Maybe they recognize. Interesting. Okay, okay. Maybe. Okay. maybe, maybe. <laughs> Slicing and dicing. Oh, I don't know if they play with him. Boink. Bo comes in. 
Bow comes in. Oh, oh, he's in. Into the rescue. Ooh, oh, Goku. <laughs> oh, in the helmet. You did good, kid. Okay, wait, let, let's look at that a bit more carefully here. So, so Grogu, he saves, he saves Din with the with a force grab, super awesome. Yeah. yeah. We go forward a bit, and so this guy gets shot, but mm -hmm. that doesn't kill him. He gets back up. Yeah. Okay. Some more sword play. This guy gets stabbed in the up in the helmet. Yeah, oh, that's brutal. God, graphic. And then he like drops yeah. to the floor. Like, yeah, he's totally perfect. toast. Yeah. His yeah. yeah, his brains are trashed. And then this guy gets shot in the foot. Mm -hmm. Springs and him down. Shot. And then I think he, this is a shot like underneath the helmet. So he gets it through the best be. car. Okay, so this guy died, knife in the head. This guy died, mm -hmm. shot in the head. What happened to this guy? Yeah, we're not quite sure because we kind of saw him get knocked down, but it didn't seem like enough to incapacitate him. So right. our only conclusion is that he's playing dead. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. So, so go back and watch this on on Disney Plus and try to figure out what happens to this guy. He gets like kicked in the leg or something. Yeah, yeah. Here it is. Yeah. He gets kicked in the leg, and then he goes down. Oh, yeah, it's somewhere out here. Mm -hmm. He like gets punched or something, and then he's just down. But like the other two people get stabbed in the head and then shot in the head. Mm -hmm. So like, is this guy just just playing possum? Like, yeah. like they saw the fight was losing. Like, never mind. I don't get paid enough for I mean, this. I mean, yeah, if you're just like, well, I'm not going to take this guy on. He's taken out all of my friends. Let me just uh, let me just chill. I, I can just play chill. dead. I got a party next Friday that I really want to go to. Like, it's fine. It's mm -hmm. fine. Like, I don't care about this base. <laughs> like, I got assigned here. Like, I didn't choose this. Yep. <laughs> I don't love the Empire. I just work here. Mm -hmm. Like, chill. <laughs> okay, back to the fight. You did good, kid. Good job. So this, this is where Din rescues Bo a little bit. Ooh. Captain American save. Yep. Slide. Oh, this is so clutch. <laughs> so clutch. Look at this. They would have died. Both of all three of them would have died if it wasn't for Grogu. So, oh man, this battle—it's—it's it's so like hand-to-hand -hand sword fighting, getting hit by blasters, all kinds of stuff, and then all of a sudden, it's like, what is this explosion? <laughs> <laughs> just, just fire suddenly, like <laughs> where did yeah, where did this come from? That's right, because these people are in intense hand-to-hand -hand combat, and then just mm. a ship <laughs> like, like, <laughs> used to be in empty room, and now they're just metal and fire everywhere. Ever, and we don't actually find this body. I mean, he probably burned. Probably burned. It could even be a clone. That, ooh, fan theory that he's... Moth Gideon is actually somewhere else. That's right. I mean, actually, that does answer our question: Why is he doing the fight one on one? Well, he's not doing the fight one on one. He sends clones out with like armor on. And maybe Super this is smart. like a previous version of a clone that doesn't have force powers. Could be. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I mean, what's what's a really good way to test your clones and how well they do in combat? Send them out. You got more clones. Send whatever. Them. Whatever. Hey, so that's Din and Grogu's perspective. From Bo's perspective, she's off doing, honestly, honestly what I thought was one of the coolest air-to-air -air combat fights I've seen. Because often in these like air to air fights, it's just like cut, 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 cut. I can't tell what's going on. And then, and, or they'll be like cut, 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 cut. And suddenly people in front of each other's face. But like, why? If you have guns, why would you do that? But since Bo and the armor were running around with melee weapons, and I guess a few of the other Mandalorians too, super cool fight scene. Because then like we would watch them just long enough to just, like see what they're doing and then slash, slash, slash. Let's watch Bo fuck people up. 
Lady Creeve, your reinforcements have arrived. Ooh, armor is my favorite. Hmm. Let's take back our planet. Woo! Let's go. I would love to be a Mandalorian. So cool. See, we're up. Going down. Let's go on down. And they converge. Have a time. Point, point. Armor still with the armor weapons, so good. You got me missiles? Go save your kid. Wait, 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 wait. So she's flying in the air with her sword. She sneak attacks this guy in the back. That's his fault. He should have been paying attention. She's got her sword out, and then she's like, "I'm gonna go after Moff, Moff Gideon," and she she puts her sword away to shoulder check him. She could have come sliding in, like doing one of those like second base slides with the feet out, and like a she could have just taken out his feet, or she could have kept her sword out and just sliced off his knees. Like, like That's right. she could have had all the talking she wanted with him without him having legs. <laughs> like her hand, right? dark saber penetrate Beskar. Ooh, interesting question. So, it should have all the similar properties as a lightsaber, I think, but. Okay. Just additionally really has these like properties of needs to follow a good leader because somehow that's what the Mandalorian Jedi made it. So I guess if she could come slicing in at just the right angle, she could get between the Beskar armor. I don't know if Beskar actually blocks lightsabers. Mm, I don't know if we ever see it in Star Wars canon where a lightsaber goes directly onto Beskar. I mean, I would guess that the lightsaber can take out Beskar, if anything could take out Beskar. It'd be a lightsaber. So even if she did shoulder check here, maybe she should immediately follow up with stab, 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 slice, slice, slice. But she That's doesn't. Right. As soon as he's on the ground, both of them should pounce on him and just step, 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 step. Even try to get under the helmet like she did with that one guy. And we so. never see them put buckles on when they put the helmet on they never strap it on so as far as i can tell it's just sitting there <laughs> like That's just true. tip them upside down and shake the helmet off and then step 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 mm. go save your kid bo katan crease no it's back out okay it's back sword fighting <laughs> Take out the base. <laughs> <laughs> Hand over the dark saber. Intense. Oof. Oh no. Oh. Okay. Okay. What? So Moff Gideon takes off her helmet and then hits her in the Beskar chest. That's right. What, why not hit her in the head? Why did you take off the helmet? So helmet also off. super cool. He's got a huge hand. He can palm her helmet <laughs> like, a, like a basketball. <laughs> He's got a huge hand. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't have a buckle on. I was stra nope. always buckle your helmet on. That's true if you're riding a bicycle too. Buckle it on. And then he like, yeah. So he takes off her helmet. Then he stabs her with his purple thingy. Pole arm somehow. And he like. Stabs him in the chest. Yeah, I mean, he could have gone for the fatal shot to the face. Yeah, she's Did right not. there. Doesn't do it. Hmm. Weird. Hmm. Also, did you hear Axe Wolves? <laughs> He's like, <laughs> I'm coming in. Like, she's like in the middle of combat, helmet off, doing doing her one on one battle to the death, and Axe Wolves is like, I'm coming in. You're like, coming in what? <laughs> <laughs> he technically communicated, but. I mean, if anybody hears it, it would be. They're like, Axe, I thought you were in space. <laughs> like, what? what the? What's happening? Fans are weak <laughs> once they lose their trinkets. Jin rescues her. Help me still trinkets, off. baby. I got tons of trinkets. Got knee missiles and shields. Grogu, get out of here. Get out of here. Grogu is a trinket. Got in my pocket. Basically a Pokemon. Heck yeah. 
again with the battle. It's this intense one-on-one, -on -one. and then, and then fireball, Just fire what? everywhere. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Where? <laughs> Where? But yeah, it's Grogu not like you saw in. a bomb ticking. It's not like you saw mm -hmm. a, a gas cylinder get exploded. Like, it's just fire everywhere. <laughs> just, just, where did this come from? Just, just fire. Just everywhere. Yeah. If you were paying attention to Wove's communications, which you can't necessarily in the middle of combat, you're not necessarily going to hear it and register what it means. It's fireball out of nowhere. Are all the other Mandalorians fighting in silence? No, they're probably telling each other, like, I'm on your six. Like, I got your back. There's someone there. Mm -hmm. And then Axe is like, oh, they're coming in. <laughs> That's not enough. Crit critical information coming in. What does that mean? It means I'm coming in hot. I'm coming in. I'm coming in hot. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what do you mean coming up? You'll see in a second. <laughs> you just crash. <laughs> Why on Grogu? I've got a plan. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Actually, now that I think about it, save the day. There's a lot of Mandalorians fighting in the base right now who don't have a Grogu yeah. to make a force shield. Did they, have, did they all die? No, they didn't, right? No, no, no. He he gets them all out somehow. Like somehow his radio communication gets to everyone else and then they leave. I think I think we may see it here. I see. So yeah, it so kills let's... all of the Stormtrooper commando people, but none of the Mandalorians. There's no, no, yeah, just perfection. Perfect. Done. Perfect. Just perfect. Perfect. This must be something that they practiced before. <laughs> okay, so let's watch that fight again from Axe Wolves. Axe Wolves went up into space to tell the fleet what was going on, and then he takes command of the capital ship. They're sending up fighters to destroy the fleet. Use the capital ship as a decoy. Evacuate everyone. Understood. Take care of the cruiser. Everyone go. Move. Go, move, move. Load everyone. On the, the orders. Go. <laughs> I mean, he's he's single-handedly piloting this capital ship, and like Assume. piloting it in in space, so like controlling where it's going, and then also manning the guns. Like, mm -hmm. why why isn't this a one-person job all the time? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there may be more than one person on the ship. Maybe the couple people who are st stuck in the crapper when everyone deployed to the troop transports. But this is essentially a one-man show here. Imagine like. They couldn't get their shoe tied or whatever. <laughs> like, can't go in a battle with untied shoes. This is trip hazard. Like, they're stuck on a ship. <laughs> okay, so bo said to use it as a decoy. And Axel's like, mm, I got another plan. I'm in. Bo, I'm coming in hot. I'm going to take out the base. <laughs> she, she she doesn't she never responds to him. She's like in the middle of a right. fight. She's in the little middle of like like lightsaber and pokey mm -hmm. electric thing, like hand to hand, mm -hmm. one mess up she dies. Like she didn't respond to him. But he's like, I'm coming uh, in. How does he know this is the right decision? He's just What if That's they've right. already captured the base? That's right. <laughs> they, there's no communication coming up from the ground. The the base could have already been captured and he's like, I'm saving the day. I'm <laughs> coming in. <laughs> coming in. <laughs> <laughs> I like that he bails. I was worried that he was gonna like see it all the way in. And that, that's, that's right. it from Wolves. He doesn't have any confirmation who died, any collateral damage, Mandalorian survived. Is it he has no idea. There's just and he'll get the update in a you know a couple hours. So he drops the ship in the hole and he's the new leader for a little while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he doesn't know where bo -Katan goes. Like, as far as he knows, she died. She died, yeah. He doesn't know the situation at all. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe he does want to be leader again. Maybe this is totally planned. Actually. Actually, maybe. Actually. Fan theories. Let's, let's yeah. spur those fan theories. Okay, so the Mandalorians are victorious. They've retaken Mandalore. They've destroyed the Imperial base through Woe's uh, Hail Mary. And then we've talked about this with Mandalorian culture. Yeah, they're all warriors. They've reignited the forges. Who did that? Uh, bo -Katan. But She's still okay. holding the flame. Does she, does she know how to like build a forge or repair one with all the tubing and who knows what? Um, as far as we see, she brings a torch to it and it lights up. 
so I'm assuming that the sh the, me the mechanisms of it was already functioning um, and that the gas, whatever flammable gas is coming out of there, was actually just flowing the entire time. Um, it just needed a spark to turn it on. So I'm okay with the the gas. Maybe it's from the ground. You can siphon the gas up. Mythosaur farts. Maybe, like this happens in some places on Earth where mm. like there'll be an eternal fire and there's like this natural siphon up. But they're saying that this forge is in perfect working order after Mandalore was destroyed. And all I have to do is give it a spark and then we're good to go. Seems we don't so. need no maintainers. Okay, I mean, that's, okay, that's it then. That's a statement of the quality of Mandalorian engineering, that these, this, um, this forge can survive through the bombardment from the Empire. So, but they still, they still, not everything is in perfect working order. There are buildings and all kinds of things that are dilapidated. Um, well, if they need to repair them, who's in charge of that work? It just okay. works. <laughs> <laughs> it just works. I can't, I can't argue with it. I don't know. <laughs> she, she pushes out the torch and it works. <laughs> it works. Know. She took the torch to one of them and all three of them turned on. A testimony to how good Mandalorian engineering is. You set one of these on fire, it lights all the other ones around it. Right. And look how complex above the flames. Look at all the tubing and mechanisms up there to make sure this is in working order. Completely fine. After what, 20 years? Maybe this thing's made no out of Beskar. Problem. <laughs> Such a waste of Beskar. <laughs> <laughs> so abundant. <laughs> okay, but but oh maybe maybe it was back in the time when these things were made. Maybe, maybe I mean, we're talking about like hundreds or thousands of years ago. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe. Never been looted. Never been looted. Even these fabrics are still here. Yeah, no problem. Well, maybe, yeah. They don't have any fabric yeah. man manufacturing. Is that an animal face? Is that a mythosaur? Not a mythosaur. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I guess that also means that there's no like rodents because rodents will get into places and like mess up wiring and stuff. That's right. So there's no animal feces in the pipes or anything. It's just perfect working order. Perfect. Even just like animals like chomping on wires. That's nope. true. You can't chomp through Amazing. Beskar wires. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> just a bunch of rats with like messed up teeth. It's <laughs> just everywhere. So this is Captain Teva's forward operating base. This is the bar that, you know, him and his pilots hang out in. I don't have any comments other than it's freaking cool. It's if we look cool. to the left, you know, it's out on the beach. You know, there's sand everywhere, but who cares? We're on the beach. If something doesn't work, we'll blame the bureaucracy back on Coruscant. We've got, you know, beach stuff to do. It's so cool. Honestly, set up like a volleyball court, maybe a little cantina mm -hmm. down here, make a little restaurant, mm -hmm. make some money on the side. Yeah, and then you could go down to the the actual beach down here. Ooh, so fun. So nice. So nice. Mm. Why would I do patrols? Love I don't want to do patrols. That's right. <laughs> I would have ass <laughs> patrols and then come back here and <laughs> just hang out. Just hang out, yeah. Get like an Xbox in there, just chill. That's all I got to say about that. I don't have anything else other than I want to be there. The best assignment in the, re in the New Republic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some people are like working underground. Like, no, we got a beachfront property. <laughs> ah, but this leads into corruption. Having this pretty sweet setup. Let's watch. I have a business proposition. I'm a bounty hunter by trade. Go on. You don't have the resources to protect the outer rim, and I need work. Let me get this straight. You want to work for the New Republic? On a case-by-case -case basis, an independent contractor. You know, this is against regulation. It'll never get approved. Which is why you won't tell them. Let me think about it. You already did. I mean, it's fine until he says this is against regulation, but then lets it slide anyway. We, we argue that the, the Republic is becoming too authoritarian and micromanagey. That is not delegating power to commanders out in the field and the outer rim well enough. But actually, this does lead to corruption, because if you tie people's hands... They either do nothing, which is they can't break regulations, or they break regulations and become effective. Either way, you're sort of causing corruption by being too authoritarian. He has to go ask, you know, bureaucracy every single time he wants to do something. Not good. Not good. But it is technically corruption. Oh, man. 
so so at my university they make us like fill out requisition forms for like every little single screw and sometimes we're like we just need 50 like just just do it and so then we'll just buy it at the hardware store corruption oh god oh god it's mm-hmm. corruption <laughs> but it's right but it's right that's right that's right Ah, uh, and then this this last scene here, or it gets pretty close to the last scene here. Grogu is still a kid. He has the most like kid response to his dad, Din Djarin, like getting a huge plot of land, talking to like the planet's magistrate, and then his response is he's he's just such a kid. I want to give you this deed to a cabin just outside of town. Thank you. And that goes for you too, Din Grogu. Uh. <laughs> it's like. Eh, like I don't know, like I don't know what you're talking about. Like, this is not interesting to me. Like, okay, <laughs> eh. <laughs> like, it's such a kid response. Yeah, has no perspective on what this accomplishment means, and he's just like, eh, this is life. Okay, okay. She's <laughs> 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 such a kid. So when uh, Karga said that Din would get a plot of land, I was picturing a plot of land. But instead, Karga set him up. This thing is built already, with oh. you know, you know, like wells and and unit you know, like electronics and appliances and lights. He set him up. Look at this. Mm-hmm, what a mm-hmm. home. No Damn. neighbors. Like I mean, it's possible that this is all his land. Like it's like, right. and, and it's very reasonable that it's all his land because Grief Karga would have incentive to to let this guy be able to hide, and he can't hide if he has neighbors all around him. Mm-hmm. Din wins one step away from becoming a warlord, right? You get all those other Mandalorians to move in. Now they have like this territory out here. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. What are you saying? They're going to take on Karga? No, no. I mean, not, not against Karga, but it's just be like, this is the, the authority, the military outpost of the place. Like Grief Karga will run the city and he has his, his uh, robot that'll do city security. But then these people can, these people, meaning the Mandalorians, can like have a base out here outside of Mandalore if they want to operate in this part of the space. I suspect that Din is going to be here alone and the Mandalorians are going to be on Mandalore doing Mandalorian things. Come on over for a party, hang out a little bit, have some grub, go back to Mandalore. Sure. Sure. All things that he can do now that he owns this land. Ready, ready for a wild plot line? Okay. If land is handed down by by hereditary, by... by um heirs yeah mm-hmm. grogu is the heir so grogu yeah. in the future backstabs dinjarin to take the land get writing fan theories but why would he need to do that since he lives so much longer than din he doesn't have to backstab he can just oh, wait that's a good point it's <laughs> 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 yeah, okay. like super uh, impatient <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's moving along there all right and that's the end of the episode <laughs> So, so at the at the end of the episode, we see the Mandalore is Mandalorian once again. Uh, Clan Din has now two hundred percent membership, and Moff Gideon might still be alive. I don't know. I'm still hoping for that. We'll see. Maybe, maybe. Join us for our next show. We're gonna watch Silo. See you guys then. <laughs>